lingers for families of missing kids and with so many unanswered questions it makes each day difficult. Much of what Trisha Kellett left behind is stored in a blue plastic bag, a pink Easter dress with white beads and frills, faded crepe paper pom-poms, the black purse emblazed with roosters that she carried everywhere, a note in a child's scrawl, mom I love you, mom I love you, to mom I love you mom. On May the 7th, 1982, three weeks before her ninth birthday, Trisha Kellett walked outside of her uptown apartment after school. She said she was going to play and she never came back. She was last seen wearing a blue long sleeve sweater, blue jeans and brown shoes. I try to keep it out of my mind, said her mother, Dorothy Jo Burnett, who talks, to, talks of Trisha in the present tense. I just hope one day she shows up. I wouldn't care if she had 20 kids. Just show up. Oh, God, it's been very horrible. You don't know where your child is sleeping. You don't know whether your child is dead. Trisha is one of many children in Chicago who have disappeared without a trace since 1980 and who have been gone so long that their cases are in a cold state, police say. She is one of over thousands of people state police currently consider missing in Illinois. Many have gotten the news of those who are suddenly gone. Most people reported missing turn up fine. Children run away from home. Adults run away from bad situations they don't want to face. But a few, like Trisha Kellett, becomes mysteries. Their families cannot mourn. They cannot heal. They wonder. They hide pictures. They convince themselves of unlikely possibilities. They shove their pain away, then take it out on holidays, on birthdays, on disappearance days. They absolutely empathize that these other uh, families of missing children and adults, said Kim Pascalini, the founder and director of the Center for Missing Adults based in Phoenix. But it's also, oh my God, we are so frustrated because why has an our child that's missing or gotten the attention even appeared in the front page of our local newspaper they're genuine mysteries he said they were reported missing all the investigation was done and nothing led to anything trisha kellett kellett didn't watch television she couldn't sit still for 15 minutes to eat a meal she liked to wear dresses and she liked to wear clogs traipsing about so loudly that her family could hear her coming from a block away she jumped rope she played cheerleader Trisha knew everyone in the neighborhood, even served meals at a local church that became her second family. That Friday, she came home from school and gave her mother an abstract painting she had made for Mother's Day. She went outside to play, biding her time until her father, who was divorced from Trisha's mother, arrived to pick Trisha and her brother for the weekend. But when her father showed up, Trisha couldn't be found. Her family started looking for her at about 4 p.m. They looked in the church. They looked at the nearby park. Several neighbors saw it. They saw Trisha get into a blue four-door 1979 Dodge with a damaged right front door and a license plate starting with the letters Q and R. Barnett called police once, twice. About 10 p.m., police joined the neighborhood search. Barnett doesn't remember much about that weekend, just that she didn't sleep and that she rubbed her black hair so thin that it's never grown, black, grown back. Trisha's oldest sister, Tina French, who was 23 at the time, lived nearby. She spent that weekend at her mother's house. In the next few months, she tried to go over every day. Sometimes, though, French couldn't face it. Her mother's grief was just too overwhelming. For months, Barnett never stopped looking. She thought she heard clogs coming up the street all the time. She'd run outside at midnight at 1 a.m., following the sound of clogs, looking for her daughter. For years now, she's never stopped hoping. Most of the time, it falls to the missing person's family to keep a child in the news, to remind police, to keep the public's interest alive. Families of missing adults have a particularly tough time. There is usually little urgency to find an adult and most are presumed to have left deliberately. The disappearances can rip families apart. Couples get divorced, siblings feel neglected, or they feel guilty. Families cope the best they can, but she was a child. Some choose to believe the worst. Some believe fantasies that their child was sold to the black market, to rich people in the suburbs. Trisha Kellett's mother picked up and moved four months after her daughter's disappearance because everywhere she looked in that cramped uptown apartment she never liked, she saw her daughter. But through three moves over the next decade, Barnett kept the same phone number. She is convinced her daughter is alive. 
Every May 7th, the disappearance day, Burnett tries to be alone because her grief is too much for others. Every May 30th, Trisha's birthday, she writes something new on the birthday card she bought for her daughter in 1982. I miss you. I wish you were here. I wish you would come home. Sometimes she writes that in red pen. Sometimes she writes it in blue. French, Trisha's older sister, decided after only a week that Trisha was never coming back. She figured that, tr that the girl was dead. She has yet to find the strength to share this thought with her mother. Trisha's disappearance, though, echoes through generations. When French's daughter, Crystal, wanted to go on a date, she knew what, was, what her mother required. The date's full name, his phone number, his address, his license plate number, just in case. Trisha Kellett's father died in 2009. French now keeps the family items of Trisha's things pulled in of the in and out of the blue bag, different times and cries. The clown, the purse, which inside still held its precious cargo, the poodle pin Trisha uh, wore on dresses, the turquoise stones that were a gift from her stepfather wrapped in a plastic bag held sure with adhesive tape tossed in the blue bag was one other item that Barnett saved a 1982 Norman Rockwell calendar open to May a month with a picture of two men sitting on a bench one is reading a book called detective stories and in the little square for March the 7th a day that brought a full moon only one note is written 3 p.m. last seen Trisha Trisha never was heard from again and the vehicle remains unidentified Trisha J. Kellett, a white female, was born on May the 31st, 1973, in Chicago, Illinois. She was four feet tall, weighing approximately 70 pounds, with blonde hair and hazel eyes when she went missing. Trisha has a space between her upper front teeth and had previously broken her left wrist and fractured her skull. These would appear in x-rays. If you have any information on Trisha's abduction, please contact the Chicago Police Department at 312 744 8261. And if you would like to remain anonymous, please contact your local Crime Stoppers.